uh, let's get some market opinion now. It's been a good run for the Indian markets and we have that additional good news that the China A shares will not be added to the MSCI Emerging Market Index. So let's find out how long this uh, relief will last. Tai Hui, the MD uh, and Chief Market Strategist at JP Morgan AMC joins us on the phone line from Hong Kong to discuss that. Um, tai, hi, good, uh, good morning. What's your own assessment of how the India versus China uh, allocation will pan out, say, for the next six months? Uh, which do you think will be the preferred market? Um, I think in terms of the more tactical short-term play, China clearly has the benefits of uh, still room for monetary easing and interest rate cuts, and as well as the rotation by investors away from uh, real estate and uh, cash into equities. But from a longer-term perspective, I do believe that uh, India has uh, upper hands on two fronts. One is that the economic reform is still very much in progress, and secondly, from a cyclical standpoint, I think there's still more upside for the Indian economy over the next 12, 18 months uh, compared with China. China. Okay, but uh, uh, thanks for joining us, Tai. But how should we understand uh, 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 India's performance vis-à-vis uh, -vis China in terms of flows? Is it possible that because of the reasons you mentioned, uh, fund flows uh, from general emerging market baskets could be uh, tilted towards China and hence away from India? Well, I think the challenge with uh, China right now is that access to international investors is still somewhat limited. Uh, the entrance is still being uh, heavily regulated, and therefore, even though you know, some investors may be interested to invest in China A shares, uh, they may find it a little bit more challenging compared to, say, for example, India. Uh, and also, at the same time, you find that most uh, investors around the world, when they view emerging markets, they view emerging markets as one, uh, mm -hmm. one entity rather than necessarily China versus India. So from that perspective, I do suspect that a lot of the flows that come into both markets will be a function of how international investors see emerging markets as a whole uh, in the lights of the Fed and the strong dollar, etc., etc., uh, rather than necessarily uh, one or the other. Okay. So uh, therefore, are you uh, telling us that this year we could see fund flows into emerging markets basket itself uh, not being good, I mean, will you actually see outflows? Because over the past eight weeks, what have we seen? A steady rise in U.S. yields, German bonds, and to some extent, even the dollar. So are we going to see uh, fund outflows from the emerging market basket or slower flows, slower inflows? I, I do think that there is a possibility that we may see a more cautious flows into emerging market baskets for the, re for the reasons that you've, you've rightly mentioned just now. Uh, the possibility of the Fed hiking interest rates, the strong dollar, uh, but nonetheless, I think this is all dependent on whether emerging markets can start to create a bit of a turnaround in their earnings performance, which has been disappointing in the last uh, three to four years. Okay. In terms of a timeline, uh, by when do you think the, uh, the, event, the decision will take place that, you know, uh, China A shares will get added to the MSCI? And how long before the funds start moving into the China A shares, you think? Well, I think um, the decision could take place over the next 12 to 18 months. But uh, just to be very clear, I think the initial stage of, um, of inclusion, you see the weighting of onshore Chinese equities being very, very small, again, reflecting the uh, accessibility to the international investors. Uh, meanwhile, um, you know, from, from an you know, India perspective, I don't necessarily think that China's A-share inclusion will mean that India's uh, weighting in MSCI Emerging Market Index will fall very dramatically over the next two to three years. So if I'm investing you know, on, um, on the emerging markets or India over the next two to three years, uh, the China inclusion is not necessarily the biggest threat from my perspective. Okay. Uh, would the, the Chinese markets suffer because of the valuations that they have begun to see? Well, we have seen a bit of a pullback in, uh, India, uh, sorry, in Chinese equities in recent weeks. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we've gone, uh, I think Chinese equities has gone from extremely low va valuation, uh, price to earnings or price to book ratio, to now what we consider to be uh, fairly valued or just above fair value. So, you know, we're still some way away from, uh, from a double territory. But nonetheless, I think this is much more of a liquidity-driven story rather than necessarily investors thinking purely from a valuations perspective. Well, Indian markets have also lost about 11% from their uh, March highs. Uh, are you expecting India to lose more before it gains, lose much more, what, another 10%? 
Um, I don't necessarily think so, because I think if you look at the start of the year, uh, markets that have performed well, such as China, Russia, Brazil, they were markets with a very cheap valuation to start off with, and uh, some of that uh, you know, dif- uh, difference in valuation has uh, converged uh, after six months. So I suspect over the second half of the year, uh, investors may not just be looking at um, Valuation, they may actually start to pay a little bit more attention towards earning perform, uh, macroeconomic performance and also earnings performance. And in this area, I think India does have a slight advantage compared with uh, those countries I've mentioned before, mm-hmm. such as China, Brazil, and Russia. Okay. Uh, finally, then, uh, Tai, the next big trigger to watch will be the FOMC meeting on the uh, 17th of June. Uh, what is your own expectation from that meeting? Any indication at all you think that we could get on when the rate hike is coming from the Fed? I think uh, the Fed will still keep it relatively vague. You know, most likely it will mention that this will happen sometime this year, but I think it will remain non-committal to exactly when. Uh, we still think that June, uh, sorry, September is, is a likely scenario. Uh, I think the retail sales numbers this week from the U.S. will be critical to reflect whether we're starting to see a better turnaround in consumption in the U.S. If that number is, is, is reasonably strong, then I think you know, they will help to cement expectation for the first hike to come in September. All right, we'll leave it at that. Tai Hui, uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, with your perspective today.